All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, we've decided to do uh, some videos to help you uh, assess uh, mental health um, and emotional health for you. And uh, I've asked Erica and Chris to be with me. And uh, so I want to let them introduce themselves and we're going to kind of jump into some questions about anxiety and depression. So Hey guys, I'm Erica Dell, and I'm a licensed counselor over at the Banyan Tree Center in Athens, and I'm really excited just to be part of this conversation today. Cool. Hey, my name is Chris Williams. I am a licensed clinical social worker, and I work in Brazelton at Northeast Georgia Psychological Services. Typically, who I work with is adults, couples. I do marriage and pre-marriage counseling. I see a lot of depression, anxiety, trauma, um, college stress, life stress, work stress, any kind of stuff like that. So a lot of stress. Yes, a lot of stress. <laughs> Lots of stress. <laughs> a lot of stressful people. Which you guys are perfect for this conversation then because uh, we're, we're, we're in this COVID season, there's a lot of increase of anxiety mm -hmm. and increase of depression. And um, I've just recently realized that those are not synonymous. And so I would love for you guys, maybe Erica, you kind of maybe define anxiety for us. And then Chris, I'd love for you to define depression for us. Yeah. Absolutely. So really anxiety is the body's response to real or perceived threat. And so I sometimes describe this to clients, we have this sort of built in alarm system, if you will, in our bodies that whenever there's a threat that our brain sort of perceives, it's like it lights up something in our brain that says danger, danger, watch out, watch out. And we even believe on a spiritual level that, that this is actually sort of a God given built in system, right? Where if we were actually in a threatening situation, this, this part of our brain would kind of come online and, um, and light up and tell us to kind of get out or get to safety. And so really when, sometimes we, we get, we want to be at an optimum level of it. And sometimes when it's, it's so heightened that it starts to sort of impede our daily activities and our daily just ability to kind of go through life and with ease and just with, you know, just kind of our, just feeling great, you know, about life, that can be really difficult. And so I think that's, um, it's certainly a normal thing. We all have it. And that's just something we want to be clear about today. It's just that it's such a normal thing. So anxiety is kind of the amping up and the, the activation of things. Chris, what would you say about depression? Yeah, so depression is more the kind of downward spiral into fatigue, irritability, tiredness, just avoidance of things, avoidance of responsibilities, things that do kind of stress you out. Um, if you before were able to take care of it, now it's kind of a difficult thing for you to find the motivation to do it. Even stuff that you were excited about, things that you're passionate about, hobbies and family and friends and things like that. Just really having a hard time finding the motivation to do it. Um, so depression is the sadness, the crying, things like that. But it is also irritability, anger, loss of interest. I know a lot of times people think depression, oh, you just stay in bed. You're crying more often, you just feel sad, but that's not all there is to your depression. That's part of it. And especially in men, depression can look much different. So with men, it is more irritability, anger, things that normally you could just brush off or say, okay, that's no big deal. You really do get ramped up in that, or it just makes you overly angry or overly sensitive and irritable. So there's just some signs of depression. You know, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of times people struggle with knowing if they they, they struggle with anxiety and mm -hmm. depression. Um, and so I would love for you guys to kind of just, Chris, let's start with you since we're already kind of depression. Talk a little bit about the warning signs or the behaviors or the things that are triggers that lead to depression. Yeah, like I was saying, things that you notice might be loss of interest in something. So let's say you love to play video games or you love to listen to music but you're just finding it difficult to press play, to turn it on, to engage in that activity that normally is relaxing. Sometimes even the thought of it is just overwhelming and stressful. Um, other signs might be that you're coping in different ways. You're taking your coping to extreme. So exercise is a great thing, promotes health, gets your body in shape, gets you healthy. But if you're taking it to an extreme level where you're exercising four or five, six hours a day, sometimes, I mean, that, it just it wears your body down and it's an avoidance of facing whatever that thing or that experience, that emotion is that maybe feels too difficult. So taking it to the extreme and kind of choosing to use something to kind of numb the emotions to, to kind of, you know, kind of get away from what's really going on inside. Um, what would you say about anxiety, Erica? So anxiety symptoms can really show up physiological or even psychological, right? So some people report like they've got racing thoughts or they can't, their mind kind of gets hooked on this one thing and they just can't get, they can't stop it until it's like kind of resolved. And then 
In some cases, um, certainly physiological symptoms, like I mentioned, like you may have racing heart rate or kind of nausea in your stomach and sometimes um, just sweaty palms and just things that you know, it kind of feels panicky, you know, that's kind of common symptoms of anxiety and kind of how you may know you're experiencing that. So anxiety and depression, kind of the activation and the spiraling downward. How do y'all know, or how, what would you say is kind of, what is the normal amount of anxiety? Because we all face anxiety. We all face sadness in life. Where is the line between the normal amounts of that kind of stress and sadness? And we need to check into maybe getting some extra help. What would you say on that? Chris, let's start with you. Yeah. So like I said, if you notice avoidance of things, especially things that were important to you or are important, like paying bills, doing your schoolwork, showing up for work, spending time with family or friends, even virtually. Um, if you're just declining those invitations or really struggling to get to work on something that you're passionate about, that you care about, um, that might be a sign. Sleep. So if you're excessively sleeping, normally, you know, you get eight, nine hours, but now you're just staying in bed more often, or you're taking afternoon naps for hours at a time. Yeah, so those are some warning signs as far as activities and things that maybe you're experiencing loss of interest in. But another sign of depression kind of goes into your belief system, whether that's your beliefs about yourself, your family, your own value, your own worth, um, beliefs about a situation or circumstance. So kind of going to that worst case scenario of this pandemic will never end, life will never be back to what I want it to be or what I think it should be. You know, things I'll never be able to see my friends or family in person and kind of that worst case extreme thinking mm -hmm. might be a sign that you're and, trending towards depression. And some of the and some of those thoughts that kind of spiral out of control are, are what if scenarios or things that are just not based in reality mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so p pulling people back into reality. Mm -hmm. What would you say for kind of knowing the, mm -hmm. the line for the a normal amount versus you might need some help for anxiety? Yeah, I think, Andy, that's such a great question. And one of the things that we want to be really clear on is that even with anxiety and depression, and Chris, I totally agree with everything Chris is saying too, and just this idea that all of, both of these are really on a, on a spectrum, right? And so there's varying levels of degrees of anxiety and depression, and your symptoms may look different from the next person's symptoms and kind of how that manifests for you or shows up for you. And so what we really want to do is just bring such a level of normalcy and okay that this is just human experience, right? That that one level of it isn't as bad as isn't worse or better than another level of it. And that really it's if, if you're experiencing any of these symptoms that, that it's okay, right? But we just want to encourage you if it gets to a level where you feel like it's unmanageable. I, I'm personally biased in this, but I'm of the I'm just of the opinion that I think everybody can benefit from therapy at any point. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you agree? It's like it's just there's so much benefit to it. And so certainly if you're at levels where it's starting to sort of impede your ability to kind of daily function, like Chris mm -hmm. was saying, um, it may be time to kind of seek somebody to talk to. But overall, we just want to, again, like I said, just it's just so normal and on a spectrum. And there's no, you know, even with we want to be delicate with even those terms, right, of anxiety and depression and not get caught up in the label of it because it's it's really just a cluster of sensations and experiences that we have as humans. And so I, I think that's a good point because, um, you know, you've got these kind of terms that mm -hmm. society kind of throws out there and they can seem really, really bad, yes. you know, and like, well, I'm struggle with anxiety and depression. Yes. Well, it's, well, we all struggle with yeah. sadness. Yeah. It's depression is the extreme. Yeah. You know, we all struggle with stress. Anxiety is the extreme, yes. you know, that kind of thing. And so just kind of mm -hmm. knowing that it's a part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. Um, now you guys are licensed therapists. You're also followers of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so I would love for you guys just to kind of speak to kind of the faith side. I know y'all do, or y'all are clinical. Uh, you work with people, um, just in life and helping them kind of make steps. But, um, what would you say is kind of the truth the, that where does Jesus enter in the picture with anxiety and depression? Let Eric, let's start with you. Yeah. And so I, I think it's so relevant in so many ways and even, God, the fact that God even like knows us inside and out, you know, that he, that he knows every thought you're having and every emotion that you're experiencing. And one of the things that I encourage, you know, and I've just to be clear, I've had my own experience with anxiety and depression and just relate to this so much. And I know so many, so many of us struggle with these emotions. And one of the things that is common is that when we experience difficult emotion or sad emotion or fearful emotion, sometimes our brain can actually label that as bad, right? And we'd say it's not bad, it's just experience, right? So, so we say a lot that feelings are not good, they're not bad, they're not right, they're not wrong, they're just experience, right? And so one of the things that I think, especially speaking to just how the Lord comes into all this too, is just this idea that, that that's how God sees us, right? When we experience all these difficult emotions, he just wants us to bring all that to him, right? He's 
ready and waiting and, and embraces us with this almost kind of compassion and just curiosity with us in it. And so I think that that um, it's just so relevant that we're having that perspective of our own selves when we're experiencing that. And um, I, th I just think that that's, I hope that that's encouraging, just this idea that yeah. God wants us to bring all of that to him and even be super compassionate to ourselves in that. He's so present with us. Yes. I mean, he, yes. I, I mean, the very name of Jesus that was given mm -hmm. at his birth, Emmanuel, God yes. is with us, that he will never leave us nor forsake yeah. us. So in, in the midst of, the, the, the small T's of life, traumas mm -hmm. of life, or the big traumas of life, the mm -hmm. small stress, big stress, mm -hmm. he's with us. Chris, what would you say about just truth and how you kind of process this from a faith yeah. standpoint? So kind of just to piggyback on what Erica was saying about feelings being labeled bad or wrong, um, this situation that we're in is something that the world has never experienced mm -hmm. on this level with everything going on. There's been pandemics before, but the world is so different now than it was before, just as far as how people connect and people work and everything else that this is a new situation for all of us that we're in right now. And it's a struggle for everybody. So if you feel like you're struggling to adjust or cope, that is totally normal. That is okay. Routines have been torn apart and thrown to the side because things are not normal. And so I think just starting with accepting the grace that Jesus offers us, you know, that is huge and that it's a gift that was offered to us with nothing we need to do other than accept it, to come to Jesus, let him know our worries, our fears, our anger, our disappointment, our grief. Mm -hmm. Anything you're feeling in this time is normal. And there are biblical examples, Old Testament, you have David, you have Job. They went through the gamut of every emotion you could experience. Jesus, Jesus wept, Jesus got angry. Mm -hmm. Jesus felt everything that we are feeling now and have felt. So I think if you're questioning, is this normal that I'm feeling this way? It is, and it's okay to feel that way. Uh, we, when we were talking the other day just to, about this this interview, um, Chris, you brought up the Philippians passage mm -hmm. and, and you know, do not be anxious about anything. And most of us stop there mm -hmm. and think that's kind of the God response to don't be anxious about anything. But the verse continues on about, you know, and, and I just loved how what angle you had on that. Could you share a little bit more about that passage? Yeah. So I love the part, don't be anxious about anything. I think that's a good mindset to get into, but it continues on. And where it continues on is how do you actually go about combating that anxiety, of challenging that anxiety. And what the author says is that it's about focusing on what's true, the joy, the love, the purity, Focus on those things, find those things in your life. Even though we're not able to see friends and family face to face and connect, we still have that love and connection with people. Even though our joy may have been taken from us, we're not able to go to a graduation or a wedding, we still can have moments of joy. It just looks a lot different. So I think being real intentional and finding those moments of joy and focusing on, I know that it's true that I can still have joy, even alongside the sadness and the grief. I know it's true that I can still have love without hugging my grandmother, or hugging my best friend. It's still possible to have that love and that connection without the things that we're used to. Uh, Erica, you said it best the other day was, um, just because something's hard does not mean it's bad. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that's a great distinction to make is we are going through something really, really hard as a country, as, a, as a, around the world. Um, and there are bad parts about it, but we can also embrace good parts about it. You know, there's families getting to spend more time than they've ever gotten to spend with their children. Um, my, my family just finished a thousand piece puzzle together. Um, that was really, really hard. <laughs> a thousand pieces together. Uh, that was really hard. But we were all in act, uh, together, working on it together. And it was just some family time that we ha haven't been able to experience lately. And so... Um, last thing I want to kind of finish this up with is just some practical tips to help people kind of make some steps. So if they're kind of recognizing, okay, I've got stress, I've got anxiety, I'm starting to do the downward spiral a little bit. What are some just one or two practical tips that you would give them to say, start, do this to move into a good, a better place in life? Mm -hmm. Eric, let's start with you. Yeah, so I would say two things. I think the first is just paying attention to your perspective around your emotion. I think so many times we move through life and if this makes sense, we're kind of experiencing life, but we're not necessarily paying attention to how we're assessing or making judgments on what we feel or what we think about what's happening around us. And 
I just can't encourage uh, dealing with anxiety and depression. So much of it really is just not so much what's happening to us, but it's how we're responding to it. Right. And so we want to really be paying attention to, okay, if I feel sad or down or, or there's loss or grief in, in, in so many of these circumstances that by the way, we're in, in a time of just so much threat and stress to begin with, right. That, this idea that it's okay, right? Like if, what if it's okay to feel all those things and we just have this sort of open, um, just curiosity about what we feel and that, that that could be okay and just help us to move through it. And so the other thing I, th I think here is just this idea of just self-care, right? Like what are you doing every day? If it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day um, that just that just fills your cup, that's just, you, that's just you caring for you, right? And so identifying maybe one or two activities a day um, that you can do that's just bringing you life in this season and especially just connecting with people whether that's your family or your community or or, or, or whoever like that self-care is is vital yes it's very very important yeah chris what would you say yeah i was gonna say just kind of going along with what erica was saying about recognizing your thoughts i think good practice would be just accepting practicing accepting that grace every single day so that might look like journaling where you're writing down areas mm -hmm. where you feel like you're being critical of yourself and others and then what does Jesus have to say about it? What does the Bible say about grace, about loving yourself, loving others? I think kind of challenging those thoughts where you feel like you're not coping the ways you should be or life isn't the way you want it to be and you're, you're feeling like you need to be more productive or do more exercise. You know, you have all this, quote, free time. So you feel like you should be getting in the best shape of your life, but you're struggling with it. That's okay. Yes. So practicing giving yourself the grace that's offered to us so journaling might be a way to do that, to kind of write down areas where you feel like you're you're struggling or where you are hard on yourself and then challenge that with some truth. Mm. I think kind of reframing that, seeing it from a different way. How does Jesus see us? Mm. When we're struggling, when we're weak, when we are dependent or not able to do it on our own, how does Jesus come to us and meet us? Mm. I think that would be a great way to kind of contrast those two ideas. And then another thing, I think self-care, relaxation. So one thing I've been using is it's an app called Abide. It's biblically based. It's a guided meditation. They get into relaxing yourself. So it kind of starts out with posture and mm -hmm. getting into a comfortable position, just really slow, intentional breathing and noticing what you're feeling in your body. But then it goes through scripture and gives us that truth in a relaxing and calm way. So that's just something that is available on your phone, on your tablet, YouTube videos, they're free. So... Well, I, I love that this conversation has kind of brought some light to, you know, not just these technical terms of anxiety and depression, but to kind of bring it down to real life. Mm -hmm. That this is something that we all face and this is something we all go through. And it's something that we can manage. And I'm super grateful for people like you that when we get to places in life that it's unmanageable, there's someone to talk to. And you guys are, are brilliant at what you do, experts at what you do. And I'm just so grateful that you would take some time today to kind of just let us into your world and, and, and let us glean from your experience and the things that you guys deal with on a daily basis. And um, thank you for giving us a gift today. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, we're going to just kind of close things up here. Um, thanks so much for watching. Uh, be looking out for other resources uh, coming soon.